So what are the types of cell death? We have two major type of cell death, you know, programmed cell death and non-programmed cell death, okay. So programmed cell death means apoptosis and its variants, okay. So we have variants of apoptosis also which we should know. So we have apoptosis and other type of programmed cell deaths, okay. So what are the other types of programmed cell death? We have necropotosis, pyropotosis, okay and ferropotosis. So all these come under programmed cell deaths, okay. So basically the most important of this programmed cell death is apoptosis which we have to know. Now coming to the non-programmed cell death, we have only necrosis here, okay necrosis. So basically these are the types of cell death. So whenever they ask you to classify the type of cell death, you will say programmed cell death, non-programmed cell death, non-programmed is necrosis and programmed most important is apoptosis followed by other types of programmed cell death which are pyropotosis, necropotosis and ferropotosis. So once we are clear with the classification, now we should know what is the difference between the apoptosis and necrosis. See, or what is the difference between a programmed cell death and a non-programmed? Basically, apoptosis versus necrosis. So I have told you cell is like a miniature human. Whatever happens to individual happens to the cell also. So any individual can also die by two mechanisms only. Okay, that is suicide or murder, isn't it? So anyone can be killed by two mechanisms only. He kills himself, suicide, or somebody kills him necrosis. So apoptosis is actually suicide, cell suicide, whereas cell murder is necrosis. So whatever happens in apoptosis, okay, is actually suicide. Let's imagine a boy whose girlfriend has left him. So he's very sad and he's planned that I'm going to do suicide today, okay. So nobody should do that, okay. This is just an example, okay. So now what will happen? So if he has to do suicide, he has to do a lot of programming, a lot of planning. So it's a very active process. It requires lots and lots of energy. So first thing, apoptosis is a very active process. Second, now he's very depressed because his girlfriend left him. So he's very, very sad. So what happens to the size? Because he's sad, he's not eating his food. So his size becomes smaller. So a cell involved with apoptosis, the cell size is smaller. Third point, you know, whenever somebody is trying to kill himself, he will never damage his membranes. So you remember, cell membranes are always intact here. Okay. Now, once you know, once you plan that I'm going to kill myself, you're not going to do a podcast on your Instagram and say, okay, I'm going to die today. Nothing, no. It should be secretive, isn't it? So you, uh, it's a very, very secret thing. So nobody should come to know about it. So when nobody has to come about it, nobody means who? Inflammatory cells. So there are no inflammation. So apoptosis does not have any inflammatory cells. Okay. Uh, now, what did you remember in apoptosis? It's an active process. The cell size which is involved becomes smaller. Okay. Uh, and the membranes are not ruptured and there's no inflammation. Now, usually who does suicide? A single person, isn't it? So if your girlfriend has left you, so only one person is going to do suicide. No. So single person is only involved. Okay. So that is single cell. Now let's uh, revert it to necrosis. Okay. Necrosis means murder. So person is walking on the road. He doesn't even know he's going to get murdered today. Okay. So very passive process. He doesn't know he's going to get murdered today. Obviously, you know, we live in a country called India where the, the thousand people will come to help you. You know, there are thousand people who will come to, to see what is happening. So somebody stabs you. Okay. Stabs you or kills you or sh shoots you. So membranes will always be damaged here. And there'll be thousands of people around you. And there are two kinds of people who will come when you get an injury. One will be those people who will be, you know, actually coming to help you. These will be very few, you know, four or five people will come to help you. So now what will happen? A person who's going to murder is going to get panicked. So instead of only hitting one, he's going to hit four or five people together. So in necrosis, usually contiguous group of cells are affected. What is contiguous? Contiguous means all those cells which are close to the if affected cells. So this is called contiguous cells are affected. That's one. So that, that's one group of people who will really come to help you. And what about those thousand people who came? So they'll be only making video. They'll be standing in the back and they'll be making a video. So they want to put it on YouTube or, you know, any social media. So who are those so many cells who are not actually helping, but they're around inflammatory cells. So there's lots and lots of inflammation, which occurs in necrosis. Okay. So what did you remember? Necrosis is a passive process and you know, whenever somebody hits you, you're definitely going to scream. So when you scream, the cell size becomes larger. Okay, so it's a passive process. Cell size is larger. The membranes are always damaged. Contiguous group of cells are affected and there's lots and lots of inflammatory cells. 
So that's the basic difference between apoptosis and necrosis. Just understand the fundamentals. You'll never forget it in your life. Okay. So that's the difference that you have to write in your exams and they expect you to write a table on it. Okay. Now, once you're clear with that, now let's see how are the cells disposed of. See, in necrosis, it's very easy. Now, there's a dead body. There are a lot of people around, a lot of inflammatory cells around. So, disposal of a dead body in necrosis is very easy. Inflammatory cells will come and eat it up and it's disposed of. Okay, so body is removed, no problem. But the problem arises in apoptosis. Because in apoptosis, the cell is dying in silently. Nobody knows about it. So, there's a dead body in the room and nobody knows about it. It's very, very silent process. So, how is the dead body removed in apoptosis? Let's see that. Right. So, this is the dead body which is lying in the room and nobody knows about it. So, to dispose of a dead body which is singly lying, what has to be done? Imagine, you know, activate your criminal mind. So, there's a dead body in the room. You want to dispose it off but you don't want anybody to come to know about it. So, how are you going to dispose the dead body? Obviously, so this is a dead body. So, let's make it like a dead body, you know, so that you can correlate it with the dead body. Let's say this is a dead body. So, you have to dispose it off without anybody knowing about it. So, how are you going to dispose it? Obviously, you're going to break it into small, small pieces. Okay, so that's what you're going to do. So, first you're going to break the dead body into small, small pieces. Then you're going to pack it in a sack. Okay, so you're going to pack it in a sack. And then you're going to put a label on it. Okay, so you're going to put a label on it. So that uh, you will call somebody. There's a sack with a label. Please pick it up and go. Okay, so macrophage will come okay it'll, it will identify this label and eat it up okay it will just eat it up and take it it will just without any questions it will just pick up the sack and go off okay so let's just see what is this processes okay what are these processes okay so how is the apoptotic body formed or apoptotic body disposed of so once the cell is dead immediately our body activates an enzyme called as endonuclease okay our body activates an enzyme called as endonucleus. So, this endonucleus is very, 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 very particular in it because this endonucleus will break down, uh, you know, uh, if you look at the nucleus, so nucleus, you know, if you look at the, uh, there's a DNA, okay. So, DNA is such a long, you know, thread, like a kite thread, okay. So, it has to be wrapped around, isn't it? So, this is wrapped around certain proteins called histones. So, there are histones. So, actually DNA wraps around histone proteins. Okay, so this is the DNA wrapping around histones. So, this DNA and histone wrapped around together is called as nucleosome. What is this called? Nucleosome. And these nucleosomes are joined together by certain proteins. So, these nucleosomes are joined together by certain proteins. They are called as linker proteins. What are they called as? Linker molecules. They are called as linker molecules. So, this endonuclease of apoptosis is very, very particular because it will go and break these linker molecules. It will go and break these linker molecules. So, this can I say, this endonuclease causes internucleosomal cleavage. Okay, so it has particularly caused breakdown in between the nucleosomes. So, because the breakdown is particular, so all the cut pieces that are formed are of equal sizes. All the cut pieces that are formed of equal sizes. Okay, so all these cut pieces are of equal sizes. So much so that if you do a process called as DNA electrophoresis, okay. So, if you do a procedure called as DNA electrophoresis, what are you going to see is, you are going to see that all the cut pieces are arranged in a line like this, in a stack like this. And they are all of equal sizes. So, this gives a pattern called as step ladder pattern on electrophoresis. So, what is this pattern called as? This pattern is called as step ladder pattern on electrophoresis. So, they said, okay, this is a very good pattern, very good diagnostic technique. Let's use a better technique to it. So, next came, they came up with a better technique called as a tunnel. Okay, so what do you understand by the technique called tunnel? Here we use TDT mediated UTP. Okay, so this is a, a this is a, a basically fluorescent dye which we use, and this dye goes and causes nick end labeling 
okay so this goes and causes nick end labeling okay so nick end labeling it goes and causes nick end labeling so everybody to remember this tdt dye okay so tdt mediated utp will go and bind to all the cut ends so what will you see is that all the cut pieces will start shining okay so you will be able to identify this cut pieces in a better way so can i say tunnel is a better way to see a step ladder pattern tunnel is a better way to see a step ladder pattern okay so this is how the cleavage is caused by endonuclease this endonuclease is very very different from the other endonucleases which we have studied because it typically causes internucleosomal cleavage and all the cut pieces are of equal sizes okay normally if somebody ask you what is the size of these cut pieces okay so these all are 200 base pair size oligomers okay so what is the size of these cut pieces so they are all 200 base pair size oligomers so that is what you have to remember okay so that's fixed size cut pieces okay now once these pieces are formed this is the cell okay so this cell packs all these broken up dna into a sac a small sac a small body a small sac is formed okay so this sac is a very small body in which all the dna pieces all the cut pieces of the cell are put together and this body is called as apoptotic body okay what is this called as apoptotic body this is a small acidophilic why acidophilic it's a small pink color body why pink color body because uh, normally the uh, in a cell the cytoplasm of the cell is pink in color and the nucleus is blue in color so uh, even the cytoplasm is pink because of proteins and the nucleus is blue because of dna and rna so what happens is when the nucleus is broken when the dna is broken down so that is blue color is broken down automatically the cell will appear more pink in color pink in pathology can be called as acidophilic also so these are small pink color bodies okay small pink color bodies and what appears here is that all the dna all the dna are broken okay but it has not disappeared so it appears like condensed chromatin so it appears like these are small pink color bodies so they will appear like this and they will be small pink color bodies which will be appearing like this and it will show you all condensed chromatin it will just show you broken up pieces of dna as condensed chromatin this body is called apoptotic body so in different organs of the body this bodies have been given different name okay so in liver it was first identified by council of people and that is why it was called as councilman bodies so if somebody ask you what is councilman bodies nothing but an apoptotic body 